Well, this is Jeff W6FCC. Just to go through a couple things here on uh, the audio settings on RSBA1. I use default settings for the mic and the speaker. And let me bring up uh, what the uh, mixers look like, the playback devices, when you're not running RSBA1. Now, I have a lot of different output devices for audio. And I have a Creative Labs Sound Blaster thing. If I hit the test key here, I mean, that's where audio is coming out. And on the record, my recording is this microphone USB. So let me now go ahead and run ICOM Remote Utility. And uh, it'll come up here in a sec. And now ICOM Remote Utility is running with my server connected and my three radios that I have connected to this test server. And now let's take a look at the uh, at these settings here. And you notice what's happened is on the playback devices, if you recall it used to be the Creative Labs, but when I ran RSBA1 for the first time anyway, it didn't know what I meant by these default devices. What are these? It didn't know. So it picked what it knew, and in this case, since I'm connected to this, or since I'm looking at the first radio, there's V-Audio 1. And if I look here, it just picked the first one it found. It said, okay, that's your default device. And on the recording side, which is the microphone, it said, okay, I know about V-Audio 1, because that's one of my audio IOs, input-outputs, and I'll just pick that. So you run the program, and you won't be able to transmit with the microphone that you want to transmit with and you won't be able to receive on the speakers that you had set before you ran ICOM Remote. So you make the mistake now of uh, of running RSBA1. Now you have to be sure that you connect to a, a radio when you are going to run RSBA1, which is the uh, simulated radio. If you don't connect to it, you're going to get a standard cannot connect to the radio message and they're a little bit annoying if you don't know why. So I'm going to go ahead and run uh, RSBA1 now. And we're going to say, okay, we're connected to 7C low. You notice here COM port 5, 7C, and V-Audio 1. And of course the baud rate is supposed to be 115 kbaud. But that's 7C, so let's go here and see what we got. So uh, you have to make sure that the model is correctly set. If you don't do that, that's a serious flaw. Uh, the server is connected to the radio with a USB. I'm connected to the server by the LAN, but the radio is in another room somewhere, but it's talking to the server through a USB cable. And I need to tell it what am I looking at on the remote utility. And it will let me set some of the other devices here, you can see. But I'm not connected to them. I'm only connected to this one. And uh, this is the only one that's going to work. And there's the 5 and the 7C and the uh, the audio. So now I go ahead and I connect to the radio. And uh, you may hear volume because the recorder that I'm using picks up audio from both the speaker output and the V audio output. But that's not how normal uh, people aren't normally recording their uh, use of the program. But on this playback device, you'll notice here, and on the rec uh, recording device, you'll notice down here the microphone's active, but it's not the one that's the default device. So if I then go ahead and transmit, hit the transmit button, and I look at the scope, there's nothing. Just maybe a little bit of noise, but there's no audio, and I'm in the center mode on the scope, and uh, plus and minus 5 kilohertz. But let me go down here and change the... Uh, the playback audio from away from the one that it selected by default and let me select my microphone which is active set it as default and now we go back and look and lo and behold the spectrum analyzer showing that there is actually audio uh, coming out of uh, my microphone into the radio and this is a modulated sideband suppressed carrier nothing on the upper sideband it's all lower sideband which is what you'd expect when you're in lower sideband mode. And you can do some of these tests, by the way, with zero RF power.
Now, you have a similar problem when you go to listen. Now, you may hear audio, but I'm not hearing anything because uh, I'm listening on my speakers and I'm not hearing any audio. But in that's, if that's the case, then you go ahead and you bring up this this little volume control thing down here, speaker control, and you see, okay, what are the playback devices? So you pick on playback device and you see it's picked V Audio 1, which is not allowing me to hear anything. I have two USB connectors. One of them is a Creative Labs and one of them is a, a separate little USB uh, device that I bought from eBay for peanuts. And that's what I'm actually talking to you through on the uh, microphone. I'm actually using that USB device, but on playback I'm using my, my uh, Creative Sound Blaster. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's the default and put that away. And now when I turn up the volume, I'm hearing audio coming out of my speakers. So these are some of the things that you can run into when you first start up the ICOM remote and RSPA1. If you haven't, if you have selected as I suggest you select these default devices for your speaker and the mic, the first time you've connected to this server and it populates these radios, it's the server that populates this radio list, it'll pick the first ICOM device that it recognizes in which it picked one. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect here. Disconnect. And if I went and connected over here now to uh, the other radio, and it says that it's uh, V-Audio 6. You notice the default device is still the same. In this case, when I look at the playback devices, once I've told it that the playback device is the Creative Sound Blaster, it remembers it for this server. This server is now is always going to play out of uh, that device. So that's some rookie mistakes you can make by uh, installing RSBA1, connecting to your own server, and it's the server that will populate the radio list and then one mistake you make is not actually connecting to the radio before you try to run RSPA1 which briefly I'll just show you what happens here's here's 7C low I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it just to show you what happens when you haven't actually connected to the radio so it looks like I'm gonna to go to the right spot and I say okay and I'm thinking oh boy I'm ready to connect so I hit the connect button and I get a lot of blinking going on, thinking that uh, well, it's just taking longer than longer than usual, and uh, it's longer than usual because uh, RSBA1 has nothing to connect to really. And you get this message, and I'm sure many of you have seen this. How come the connection failed? And it can fail for a bunch of reasons. One of them is you haven't actually connected to the radio. Uh, another one is that you didn't select the right. CIV address. Another one is, and if we take a look over here in these connection settings, if this doesn't match up, or this doesn't match up, or this is wrong, or this is wrong, you're going to get these messages. So before you connect to a uh, a radio with RSB1, be sure that you have the model. The connection is always USB. The uh, remote utility is the name of the radio over here, in this case 7C low. And then the COM port baud rate, CIV, and V-Audio have to match. The 515, 7C, and V-Audio 1 match the 5, 7C, 115 K-Baud, and V-Audio 1. If that's the case, remember you have to connect to the radio, and once you've connected, and it tells you the port that you're on, now when you say uh, connect with RSB1, you hit connect, uh, now you're going to have the ability to actually use the radio and everything is functioning and so when I go to transmit for example and I look at the scope testing one two three four I'm on the air there you go just be sure that you uh, select these uh, settings down here the playback device and the recording device uh, to your actual hardware and not to the virtual hardware that uh, it's going to default to. Good luck with that. W6FCC. It's uh, January, February, March. March 18th. Gosh, it's a Monday. Time flies. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, everybody.